course together we'll do 4-8. It's exercise 4-8, not brief exercise 4-8, and it's the Plevin Company. You can find it on actually ev everything in the book is on 196. Cool. In your workbook, I want you to do a couple things quickly. If you, well, we'll get back to that. Um, we are going to complete all of the general journal. I'm going to do it just like yesterday. We'll do the key account first, and then we'll bring it in. Notice already what's different about revenue. There's two of them. Okay. And then on down. The next thing on that page where it says owner's capital and income summary, we're not going to use those since we're using my form. But a, so you can cross those out. Yep, that middle section where it says owner's capital and income summary, you can cross those out. We're basically doing that in the T account already. These are glorified T accounts. So you can cross that middle section off. And we will be doing what's called the post-closing trial balance. Trial balance again. We've done trial balances many, many, many times. Um, what I'd like you to write next to that, it, circle this. Just think how many trial balances we've done. We've done just the trial balance. We've done the adjusted trial balance. And now we're doing the post-closing trial balance. We've done, this will be our third one. It's just a stop checkpoint to make sure your debits equal your credits. Like these things are what we bring into the next fiscal period. We'll write about that later. So let's get this thing updated. So if you're looking at the Plevin Company in the book, page 196, notice this is the adjusted trial balance. These are all of the dollar amounts kind of going into closing up the books. Of that list, cash through utility expense, some of them need to be closed. Okay, let's list what needs to be closed. All revenue, all expenses, and drawing. You did this yesterday, but again, accounting works when you do this in a repetitious manner. So we're using repetition here. You did this yesterday. Now they're closed. What's another word for closing the books? Zeroing out. And they all will dump to capital eventually. It's not like we're throwing the money away. We're just dumping it from bucket to bucket until it gets to be in the right spot. All permanent accounts are all assets, all liabilities, and capital. Now with the exception of drawing, these are all income statement accounts, and down here are all balance sheet accounts. What I want to do first is get all of the balances in. Okay? Could you do this without T accounts? Absolutely. It's just that I want to give you as much information as I can. Do we close cash? Nope. How about AR, equipment, or accumulated depreciation on equipment? Nope. We're not going to list those here because they're permanent. They're all rolling together. Same thing with the liabilities. I see accounts payable and I see unearned rent revenue. Okay? They're not being closed. What do you think we're going to do with that $45,200 capital balance, though? Should we put it down here? $45,200. Who's this person? Levin. So we can actually put in Levin Capital. Do you have a question, Ira? Um, owner's drawing of 16000 You can put in Plevin drawing, and that's got a $16,000 debit balance. How am I knowing where these go? Well, I can see debit and credit of where their normal balance is in the book, but yours truly has starred the normal balance sides as well. Okay, this time we have service revenue and rent revenue. So instead of sales up here, let's label one of them service revenue. 
And then let's just make another T called rent revenue. Service revenue had a $64,000 balance. And how about rent? $6,500. Does everyone know where I'm getting these dollar amounts? Who can tell me? Where am I getting these amounts? In the book, right? Page 196. Good. Looks like we only have three expenses. We have the depreciation expense. That's rocking an $8,000 debit balance. We have salaries and wages expense, $55,700. Whoa, why is that so much money? Our employees are our largest expense to pay them. Okay, And utility expense of 14900 So you don't need that third one, or that fourth one, excuse me. Why don't we see income summary in that list anywhere? That's the that's the funnel. Yep, that's the dump the bucket we dump into. Okay. It's only used for the one day when we're closing the books. Why do we not see assets liabilities on this list? Because they are permanent accounts that we'll use next year. At this point, you really wouldn't need your book, so you can set that aside. Let's start closing these. If you recall, there's an order to doing this. Okay, and let's fill this in. We're going to close, and I'm not going to write close every time, but close, we're going to close revenue into income summary. Then we're going to close all the expenses into income summary. And then we're going to close income summary into capital, that's kind of the way to finally get it to its real bucket that it belongs to. And then we're gonna close drawing into capital. I won't list the debits and credits like I did yesterday. We'll just put them into work, put them into action instead. Okay. There's a few things I wanna do up here by income summary before we get started. <clears throat> I want you to put these two boxes here. When we're forcing our numbers to equal, the debit side is if we have a net income, the credit side is if we have a net loss. Spoiler alert, we're gonna have a net loss on this one, okay? And I want you to write up here, if revenue are greater than expenses, we have a net income, if revenue is less than expenses, we have a net loss. So those little checkpoints, I think, will help drive you on that new account that we're learning about for the first time. All right. I need these two revenue accounts, the two this time instead of one, kind of like we have all these expenses. I need them to be zero. So let's make these T's into I's and put zero balances in. What will force them to be zero? Debiting their amounts. So if I say minus 6,500 over here and minus 64,000 over here, it's forcing a zero. And I forget who said it yesterday, it might have been Ira. Had we credited that, it would have actually doubled instead of depleted it to zero, okay? Kind of like yesterday with the expenses, can we, Slap these two together. We, we can. Okay. What is 64,000 plus 6,500? Is it 70,500? Okay. I have two debits. Can I get by with one credit? If you want to grab your highlighters, I'm going to do different colors for all the accounts today just so it looks better. I've got one credit that equal the two debits. Shall we journalize that? Not before I make this notation. 
two close tails. Check. I did number one. Yeah, that's closing all the revenue. Yep. Revenue. I use revenue and sales interchangeably sometimes. I need to get a little bit more specific. Thank you. So now let's journalize that. Find this page and put your two debits in and your one credit. Is it dated for you? Yes. Fabulous. Now you'll notice they put reference numbers in. That's had we gone and posted them and brought them back. That's what these are. We're not doing full on posting, so I guess I would just X that out. We're not really doing full posting here. Do you have a line in between the next one? Hopefully, let's put a quick explanation in. To close, let's say both revenue. At this point, had we been posting, we'd go post, we'd bring it back and put those account numbers in. Let's move on to our second entry. So here are the four. We've done one. Now let's close all of our expenses into income summary. There's only three. I want them all to be zero and I'll force them to be zero in this time this time by crediting all the their dollar amounts. Because had we debited we would have doubled. We want to deplete them to zero. So under depreciation expense, I want to have a credit of minus 8,000. Under salaries and wages, I want to have a credit of minus 55,000, was it 200? 700. And under utility, but to utilities expense, I want to have a credit of 14,900. I can't read my writing there. So I have three credits because had I debited, it would have doubled. That wouldn't work. Why, let's talk about this for a minute, why on two accounts that are on the right side of ALO, revenue and expenses, why are the expenses all flip-flopped? Because they're naughty accounts, if you recall. They don't follow normal, the normal rules. So I have those three credits. They'll equal one debit. I don't know the answer. Does someone want to do the math quick with the calculator? What's 8,000 plus 4,000? 4, 14,900 plus 55,700. Anyone? I could peek over here, but should we peek? Yay, there it is, 78,600. So I'm going to debit that right here because I had credited everything else over under expenses, so I'll debit that. I'm also going to say to close expenses. I'm also going to get my highlighter out and take those one, two, three credits and the one debit and highlight them so I can tell they go together. Can you tell our problem from an analytical standpoint? Can you tell why we have a net loss? We have more expenses than we have revenue? Yep, so we'll work through that one next. Now, simply take what you did there and journalize it. We're just grabbing the one debit. We're grabbing the three credits that we did. Do you see why we lump them together in income summary and not itemize them? You could, you could make it work that way, but it just makes sense to sum them up.
Now let's take a closer look at that income summary. We have a panic button going on right here. Our panic button is that our debits do not equal our credit. And I'm looking at my little notes above here, and if my revenue exceeds my expenses, life's good, I have a net income. But in this case, my expenses exceed my revenue, and I have a net loss. Remember, you're gonna pull down the larger number. So if I bring that 78,600 to equal 78,600, I need to add to the credit side. And in this case, it's a net loss. So the difference between 78,600 and 70,500, I'll just peek, 8,100 is what we need to put in here for net loss. I see a credit. Where are we closing this into? You can peek down here. Where are we closing the income summary into? Who gets to keep or take a hit on the money? The owner. Okay, so if that's a credit, this has to be a debit, but that's also a subtraction. Doesn't that make sense? If the owner has a loss, he takes a hit. Had it been a, a, a net income, it would have been a debit up in income summary and it would have been a credit down here. So, highlight time again. And down here, if you even want to write net loss, you can. Our art project's looking pretty good. Let's uh, now journalize those two. Oh, I forgot. Um, to close expenses. And this one is to close income summary. And in this case, it was a net loss. I forgot my explanations. We have one adjust or closing entry left. Admittedly, I know this slows us down, but you're also just picking in a lot of learning at the same time, which is pretty great. Okay. The last thing we need to do according to this list is close our drawing into capital. Okay. So Plevin drawing, he had a $16,000 balance, which we need to force to be zero. A debit in this case would double it. So we need to credit to offset set that 16,000. Well, if I see a credit somewhere, its partner needs to be a debit. I start to sound like a broken record, don't I? So down here under where we're closing into capital, according to what this says, we need to say minus 16,000 right here. Again, like a net loss isn't a drawing seen as owner. You don't get to keep that money. You already took it out. For the last time, I'll highlight. Lucky for this owner. Despite a net loss and despite drawings, he came in, Plevin, I don't know if Plevin's a boy or a girl, but Plevin came in with a $45,000 200 balance. So it's not all terrible, it's just that it took two different hits.
what you see in this middle section that I crossed off basically is what we did in the T account. This is just more of a formal financial statement, or excuse me, formal financial tool versus the T accounts are definitely just a, a working tool. I just wanted you to use that because we'd already learned it that way. The last piece is we need to do one last check that our debits equal our credits. Okay. You can use the book for this part. Cash remained untouched through this whole closing process. Why? Because it's an asset that does not get closed. It rolls into the next fiscal period. So you'll want to list cash, $9,840. You'll also want to list all of the other assets. Notice this contra asset is slated as a credit because it contradicts the value of the equipment. These numbers remained unchanged. We have two liabilities, accounts payable and then the unearned rent revenue. Owner's capital is listed at 45,200. Is that the real balance? It's not. We need to take our 45,200 that it started at minus 8,100, which was a net loss hit and then minus 16,000, which was our drawing hit. So its balance is 21,100. That is what's going to show up on the post-closing trial balance for capital. The adjusted trial balance told a different story, but because we closed, we're going to see the 21,100 as the balance. Why did it stop there? Why did it stop after capital? What about drawings and revenue and expenses? We closed them. They don't have balances anymore. They all got dumped into capital. The revenue and expenses got dumped into capital, which proved a net loss and the drawings got dumped into capital. So it's not like they've completely disappeared, it's just now the owner's capital gets to either take the hit or take the love. Then the two columns would be added up to be 34,520, and notice the single and the double ruling that occurs. I want you to make a few more notes, and then I'll let you work on your own. These two, the adjusted trial balance and the post-closing trial balance, are at the end. This shows what was used. This is the, the very end after temporary accounts are zeroed. This is the last thing that happens during the big accounting cycle. We journalize, we post, we make a trial balance. Then we adjust and make an adjusted trial balance. And then we close out the books and make a post-closing trial balance with some financial statements sprinkled in between. And this is the last thing that happened. I wanted to do this one with you because of the loss and because of two more revenues. 
I want you now to do the K Mago company. This is available to you if you want it. You do not have to use it. If you can cruise through it without it, awesome. Okay. Um, you'll just simply list the adjust or excuse me, the closing entries. And then you'll just do the post closing trial balance. I want you to note the capital number right now. Just write that number down somewhere. Five thousand nine hundred and thirty two. 5,932 will be the capital. Or you could write down that 8,096 will be the post-closing trial balance number. You will be able to get through this in a much more rapid rate um, because I'm not here to slow you down. But remember, my job is to slow down enough that you understand it. Um, I will put these uh, numbers back up in a few minutes, so you can just do a checkpoint. I think it's gonna be pretty easy though. Again, spoiler alert, this one is a net income. Thank you, you guys did an awesome job.